Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the podcast. I'm thinking of watching things. Um, I'm your new host, Brooke. I just decided Caleb, with his mediocrity, he just <laughs> he just wasn't cutting anymore. Oh. Um, no, I think I am hosting this one because I have the most white Christian girl Christmas spirit vibes going on um, and I'm dressed like Santa so that makes me in charge of everything today um, but we're gonna first start off with a question like we always do um, apparently uh, so the question for this week as we introduce uh, you know the co-hosts here um, is what is your favorite winter vibe movie winter vibe wintery anything like that movie who wants to go first uh i i will <laughs> um my name is caleb the shamed former host of this mm-hmm. podcast um and i want to say inside lewin davis but i'm i'm like 100 percent sure that i've used that for another i knew it like i, <laughs> I knew it <laughs> i love that movie so much so i won't talk about that uh, I was considering The Thing and Hateful Eight, but the, those are kind of basic. Mm. And uh, maybe Fargo, but uh, not feeling it. Uh, so I'm going to go with The Ascent. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to land on. Um, Larissa Shapitko's uh, 1980, no, 19, 1979, 78, 77. Should have come in with information. Uh, it's her <laughs> uh, war epic uh, in Soviet Russia, um, and it is one of the most moving war films uh, that I've ever seen. And I'm not a big war film fan, uh, but it is it is a it is one to watch with a like cup of a warm drink mm-hmm. and be devastated by as it, as you watch it. Um, very cold movie. Also, she was the wife of uh, Alem Klimov the director of Come and See. So um, some fun little romance connections wow, there. a beautifully miserable couple. <laughs> yeah, well, he only made Come and See after she, she died. She passed away in a car accident at like age 40 something. And he was like depressed and made Come and See. So oh, um, fair. Okay. yeah, that's uh, some fun little trivia for you. But yeah, I'm, I'm going the ascent. Nice. Merry uh, Christmas. Alicia? <laughs> um, hello all, I'm Alicia. And I am going to go with another uh, cheery flick, um, Under the Skin 2013, director Ooh. Jonathan Glazer. Um, because I watched it for the first time um, sometime this past fall, like early fall, I think. And I just really really loved it i think it's so interesting in its kind of like near realism and it like the the bleakness of the winter works with the fact that everyone has an accent that you can't understand without subtitles Mm -hmm. and creates this like otherworldly version of earth that helps you um understand understand and start to sympathize and empathize with scarjo's character as an alien um so yeah, weird, weird winter vibes. Love it. That film's incredible. I'm a big fan. Yeah, of so good. Um, Arjun. I guess that leaves me. Yeah, I'm Arjun. And Caleb, in his little introduction, said uh, all the films that I was considering. So I had to <laughs> pivot. And uh, I'm, I'm going to say The Shining, which is just yeah. as basic as all the ones that you mentioned. And only because it feels exactly like the way life feels right now with the uh, cabin fever and the snow piling up outside of my house in Northern Virginia. And um, kind of like the thing, I-, I was thinking that just because of the same reasons, uh, skepticism about uh, the people living in my house with me and the paranoia <laughs> that comes with constantly being stuck inside, but The Shining does that just as well, if not better, so. <laughs> The Shining is always my answer for when anyone asks me what's my favorite movie of all time. And uh, somehow I didn't think of that about when winter vibes, <laughs> like we talked about that, didn't consider it. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. A lot of snow in that movie. A lot of snow. <laughs> so, 
qualifies. Um, yes, and I am Brooke. Um, I know everyone has mentioned basic stuff, and I'm just going to say that this is the most basic episode um, for me that I will ever be. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there and say snow dogs. Don't know why everyone else <laughs> missed that opportunity. Um, but yeah, you have Cuba Gooding Jr. You have, you know, Alaska and you have puppies. What more could you ask for? Um, if I'm being, you know, a film person, um, I guess I could also say another shout out to our Westerns class. There's this like, I think it's 1971, according to the Google search that I just did. Um, McCabe and Mrs. Miller. That one is really good. It's a Western. There's like, like a house church thing. I can't quite remember, like catches on fire. There's just a lot of like running around in snow and trying to shoot people which is oddly very calming and very soothing. Um, so yeah, lots of murder and snow, kind of like The Shining. <laughs> I, I, find I love McCabe, that you... Uh, I, I'll go, I, I found McCabe and Mrs. Miller to be like a really cozy movie. Yes. And like, I, I, to the people I watched it with, I was like, wow, that was like so warm. And like, I really just felt like uh, hugged by that movie. And they were like, what are you talking yeah, about? It's, it's about murder and prostitution as any good Western is. <laughs> but there's like fireplaces. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. yeah, I love that you can't hear anything that anybody is ever saying in that movie. It really is just like a nice calming vibe to not be able to understand anything that's going on. I love it. Yeah. Gotta love Robert Altman, man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, in case you couldn't guess it by our, well, my festive attire, um, today we are going to be talking about our top five, loosely, because uh, I can't make any decisions, but our top five favorite Christmas slash holiday slash holiday vibes movies. Um, so yeah, we're going to just be going around going down from five to number one. Um, and who would like to start with their number five? Caleb. Uh, <laughs> Caleb <like> start. <laughs> um, he said, I didn't prepare. <laughs> yeah, I meant to, I really wanted to go back and rewatch a lot of those like 20, 30, 40 minute claymation Christmas mm -hmm. specials. Mm -hmm. And those will definitely appear on my list later, but I didn't get a chance to go back and actually like refresh my memory on a lot of those. So I'm gonna start with one that I watched tonight mm. uh, because I heard it was a Christmas movie and I love the filmmaker, so I had to watch it. That this My, my number five is My Night at Mods, uh, which is one of Eric Romer's films. Uh, one of his more lauded films um, Roger Ebert said that the the titular scene, the night at Mods, um, was one of the most magnificent expressions of humanity he'd ever seen on film. Um, and I don't know that my praise is that high for it, uh, but I do love the films of Eric Romer. And uh, this was a it was it's 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 one of those like kind of Christmas kind of not movies because it takes place mostly on Christmas Day, but the characters like have like maybe four or five references to Christmas and that's not really the central um, like pop plot pusher. Um, but there is a Christmas tree in the background of <laughs> Maud's apartment. So uh, I think it counts. And uh, it's just a, a film about a, a devout Catholic whose Catholicism is called into question when he uh, comes into contact with Maud and there's seduction and romance, but also just lots of talk of philosophy as any Romer film, uh, as all Romer films do. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Not, not my favorite Romer, even though it's a lot of people's favorite Romer, but uh, yeah, that, that's gonna be my pick, My Night at Mods. Alicia. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick little mental roulette here. Mm -hmm. um, okay, actually, I'm gonna go with one that, yeah, it belongs a number five because it doesn't belong higher. <laughs> I'm gonna go with um, Meet Me in St. Louis. And I'm saying Louis, not Louis, because if you know the tune of the, uh, the, the, the titular song, um, that's how it goes. And Judy Garland is just like 
I mean, it's it's basically that movie is like just an excuse to watch her exist and hear her sing. And she's just so like radiant and amazing. And it's really cute too. Like it's it's kind of screwball-y in certain uh, scenes with the whole like family element. And I like that like it has a center, uh, like a, a romance, but the the family story is the main story of the film. Um, and I've always thought the World's Fair is such a cool thing. Mm-hmm. And I would love to like go to a World's Fair. Um, and because the movie centers around the World's Fair in St. Louis, um, I think that's like a really fun, uh, a really fun setting and set piece. And um, also, though uh there is this like halloween uh sequence that's genuinely terrifying because like this is where you know halloween like the early days of halloween in like mischief night era where kids would just run around like wreaking havoc on their towns and um like lighting things on fire in the street they just like steal furniture and like light bonfires in the middle of the street Um, and the main, like, the main little sister, Tootie, is a little shit. She frames, uh, the guy that Judy Garland is trying to get with, um, well, doesn't frame him. She, (laughs) spoiler alert, uh, falsely accuses him of, um, something, uh, unkind. But it's okay. In the end, there's a happy ending. I like that. It's sweet. It has great musical numbers. It has Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Iconic. Um... And uh, yeah, and the trolley song too. Yeah, it's just sweet. It's not amazing or anything. There's some parts that are racially strange, <laughs> um, but it's a solid Christmas flick to rewatch over and over. Arjun. <laughs> oh yeah, that brings up me. I, I nerd my list down to six, so I, I feel like I have to just drop one off my list and I'm gonna drop Elf off, even though it's probably my favorite Christmas movie which really only leaves one traditional Christmas movie coming at my number five spot with uh, Home Alone 2, which I think is a masterpiece. I don't know if it's found itself on any of your guys' lists, but definitely was one of my favorite movies growing up. Um, I don't know, it's kind of tainted now by the John Mulaney bit. It's like kind of all I can think of when I think of Home Alone 2, but at the same time, uh, getting to watch Joe Pesci and Tim Curry and a herd of other characters just kind of go at it in this crazy mishmash of a New York movie that has, um, oh my God, just so many classic lines. I I can't wait to rewatch it this holiday season and uh, still just brings me so much warmth all these years later. (laughs) Awesome. All right, I'm coming at you with another quality film <laughs> for my number five. Um, is the absolutely horrendous, uh, made for TV. We're bridging into Hallmark movie territory. Uh, <laughs> Holiday in handcuffs. <laughs> Don't know if anyone has seen it, <laughs> but you should. Mario Lopez, <laughs> Melissa Joan Hart. She kidnaps him at gunpoint. Um, and makes him pretend to be uh, her boyfriend for the holidays so that she doesn't disappoint her family. Uh, Touch is a little too close to home. I am <laughs> going to try not to... Brooke, to- what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's fine. There's a body in my trunk. I forgot to feed okay. him. <laughs> but, well, I, yeah, we all knew that. But, yeah, yeah, but <laughs> there's another body in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's just great. And it's so bad, but so good. What's my favorite part? There's like a part where Melissa Joan Hart in, in a very, very bad stunt double scene, um, like ice skates around this little pond with Christmas lights. And I think I like it because my mom and I always watch it together. So that's my like sentimental reason for liking it. Um, but I also just really like it. <laughs> Will it enjoy it as a film? So yeah, catch it on any like free form or ABC channel or whatever family channel um yeah just watch it when you don't have any other options for watching things and then you'll like it (laughs) wow (laughs) high recommendation bro yeah well it's my number five so (laughs) you give it too much praise but yeah all right moving right along to number four i'm assuming i'm going next and we'll just keep this little 
yeah, rotation if, if you going. Know, I just I feel like there's a greater chance that I'm going to mispronounce one of your guys' names for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've known you all for several, several years now, I think it's just the more but the more chances I have, the higher probability of doing that. So if you wouldn't mind just keeping up this pace, that'd be great. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, sentimentality, like you just mentioned, should play a role in these lists because. I mean, that's what Christmas movies are. Like it's watching things, you know, in a yearly ritual with family or friends or, um, and that, that, that's always like a very important aspect, I feel like of Christmas movie watching. Um, but this one is a kid's Christmas movie that I watched the other day for the first time. Uh, number four is for me gonna be uh, a Muppet Christmas Carol. Um, I have little to no experience with the Muppets, which is sacrilege in some circles, but I just never watched them growing up. Um, and I'm realizing now just how much of a mistake that is because it was just delightful. It was a delightful little film. Um, and I would have loved this one in particular when I was a kid, if I had watched it as a kid, uh, because it's terrifying. Uh, and I loved things that scared me as a kid. And I would have been so scared of the ghosts that come and visit uh, Michael Caine as Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, the, the, the main one being the ghost of, uh, of Christmas, not future, not the ghost of Christmas past. Yeah. Um, she is like this floating like monster and it is terrifying like if you want to be scared look up like ghost of christmas past muppet <laughs> christmas carol and it is it is genuinely horrific um and i would have ate that up as a kid i blocked this out of my memory i haven't watched that since i was a kid because i remember it traumatizing me and that is why so thanks <laughs> yeah. for resurrecting my trauma <laughs> of course uh <laughs> wouldn't want to bury that um but yeah, it's just so funny. Um, one of my favorite lines was like, I, I pulled it up just so I don't mess it up. Um, but like Karma asks, like, um, I'll do the voice. Um, if you please, Mr. Scrooge, it's gotten colder and the bookkeeping staff would like an extra shovel full of coal for the fire. And then one of the rats says like, we can't do our bookkeeping. All our pens have turned into ink sickles, which is like the silly, like kids will laugh at that. And then the next little rat says, our assets are frozen. Very funny. Just so good. And like kids like over your head. But like as an adult, I was like, I get that. I understand. Um, and there's just little lines like that are peppered throughout the movie. And um, I think that the uh, Christmas Carol is just not even one of the best Christmas stories, but one of the best stories period in like uh, storytelling, generally literature, film, anything. And uh, any, literally any portrayal of Tiny Tim will have me like tearing up. And it's like a little baby Kermit that's like Tiny <laughs> Tim, it's Kermit's kid. And it is like, it is heartbreaking. Um, and it, it it moved me and I watched it as a 22 year old for the first time. So uh, yeah, good stuff there. Mubba Christmas Carol. Okay, I guess I'm saying the name. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely don't remember. <laughs> it's you. Okay. I was trying to make uh, eye contact, but it doesn't work with Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't uh, didn't pick up on that. I'll try to, Alicia, when I finish, I'll try to like nonchalantly pass the ball to you. Yeah, that's like, great. I mean, hopefully next you? time I, after this experience, I'll remember. But honestly, who's to say? I'm a little... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but say I'm a little out of sorts, but that's a regularity. Um, okay, I'm going to go with... Um, da, 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 da. I'll go with L for number four, yeah. Because it genuinely is like comedic gold. I'm sorry, no matter what age you are, like mixing the, the sentimentality of like Christmas and all the themes around it and love with just like James Kahn in New York City, like capital everything, like <laughs> it's perfect. Um, and there are so many jokes that I know that like some people shit on movies like Shrek, that um, <laughs> children's movies that hide kind of like, hide jokes for adults to get um, 
because some people are just like pick what kind of movie you are or are you a kid's movie or are you an adult movie stop being obnoxious mm -hmm. but I think it does it so well there are certain things I didn't pick up on as a child didn't understand that he was drunk in the mailroom um until I was much older I just thought he was having a good time drinking um what like syrup or whatever or hot chocolate out of yes a flask um but it's just great and Will Ferrell is so charming in it in a way it's kind of like a born sexy yesterday uh gender swap which I appreciate and like you know that kind of thing can be very strange um just by nature but he pulls it off he's like I really like him in roles where he gets to be funny and weird, but also have this like softness to him. Um, and he's great. Everyone in it is great. I'm not going to list everyone, but Mary Steenburgen, especially um, anytime she's this kind of like benevolent mom who's telling her husband to be a little less harsh. Um, it's wonderful. And uh, John Favreau dentist cam or sorry, uh, pediatrician cameo, wonderful <laughs> well the I, you know like the i was today years old thing like i was yesterday years old i guess when researching for this list when i found out that john favreau directed elf like what the <laughs> fuck um i saw a tweet that was saying like that was his peak was as it. a director <laughs> probably Which, like, honestly fair, i like yeah. chef but <laughs> <laughs> yeah is is buddy the elf the peak for will ferrell no no <laughs> I almost think it's it's such a tough role, I think, to to play that level of innocence and not be like annoying. I think it'd be really easy to hate that character, but he plays it with such charm. I'm uh I'm a bit confounded as to what you'd say is his pinnacle, if not that. I'm inclined to say uh, him playing George Bush on SNL, but probably I'd have to go with Talladega Nights, which is, I think, basically him playing George Bush as a race car driver <laughs> and this still charms the hell out of me to this day. Elf, Elf is a good choice. I, I can't hate on that too much, but um, or, or the other guys. I, I love the other guys, too. <laughs> I yeah, the, the other guy's line where he's like, and then I bang your tuna girlfriend. That's not... Um... <laughs> that's just a great line in that movie I just to put that out there uh, yeah I watched Elf for the first time like four days ago oh um, wow <laughs> and, uh, yeah and I don't know if I like it <laughs> at, at all I don't know I'm, I'm missing the Will Ferrell gene I just some part of me, it, I just don't get it. I don't know what it is. Everyone, everyone loves him. I just, I don't like him. <laughs> so I don't know. I thought it was a decent movie, but I think a lot of these movies for me, like Caleb said, are going to be like rooted in my childhood and my connection to them. So I think watching it like four days ago didn't quite do it for me, but there were some funny moments. There were some funny bits. Will Ferrell just isn't my man. He isn't going to do it for me. That's okay. Something else that's crazy about Elf, though, is I feel like a lot of people didn't process that that was Zoe Deschanel until much <laughs> later. Because it's like, you know how she went from playing, like, dark emo kind of manic pixie dream girl to, like, mod cloth manic pixie dream yeah. girl? <laughs> I feel like it, it, there was no break there. And, I, I, and also with the hair, I just feel like... Um, that was like another lifetime for her and for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then like the Christmas season where I found out that that was actually Peter Dinklage. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Is it my turn? <laughs> he deserved better and he got better. He got, he got what he deserved in the end. It's okay. Yeah. Peter Dinklage, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my number four pick. Uh, I'm going there, I suppose. It's uh, it's eyes wide shut. We can have our debate about whether it's actually a Christmas movie if we want to, but uh, I'm not too interested in that. What I am interested in is just like a fascinatingly absurd movie where I, 
on the one hand, I, I don't want to put it on this list because I know we're never going to get the true vision of what Stanley Kubrick actually wanted with Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, but on the other hand, I am a conspiracy theory lover who loves going down the absolute rabbit holes of trails you can go to with what that movie is and the bizarre consequences behind uh, its creation and Stanley Kubrick's death the day after he uh, turned it in to uh, have the final cut and the multiple other bizarre circumstances that surround it as well as Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman basically letting their relationship fall apart on camera for all of us to see. And I think it is a wonderful artifact of filmmaking and something that even though I don't think it's perfect um, because it is not the movie that Kubrick probably wanted, uh, I think it is a fascinating, fascinating piece of culture that I love revisiting. And uh, I will always return to it during holiday seasons for its cheer maybe is not the right word but <laughs> i wrote a paper about eyes wide shut for uh kevin smith's noir class like arguing it as a neo-noir um i love that film and i <laughs> love I, every time i've watched it with people which i think has been three times everyone that i watch it with hates it and they they're like <laughs> what is this like this makes no sense um like uh, just m lots of hate for this film in the circles that I've been in for whatever reason. I can't imagine why, because it's Tom Cruise wandering around, being a little horny bastard, uh, <laughs> getting caught in sex cults. Ah, man, what's not to love? That's Christmas, baby. Um, I will say it has maybe the best final line of like ever of cinema, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Just that that conversation between Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise, I won't spoil it because you just, you got to watch it after having seen what you just see. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that, that is true. I, I might like the strange love final line more in Kubrick's uh, works, but I, I can't disagree with you there. And like a little tidbit that I, I love to kind of open up the rabbit holes of what you can go to. Uh, the journalist that Stanley Kubrick had consulting him uh, on the entire film as a New York Post writer who has been the first to capture photos and the first to break stories around multiple conspiracy theory type um, stories around the world, including being the first person to take a picture of Jeffrey Epstein's dead body. Um, and he consulted uh, with Stanley Kubrick on the making of Eyes Wide Shut. So do with uh, that little start to your Google searching as you please. <laughs> oh my God, what if what if Kubrick was alive today for uh, for the Epstein scandal? What what would what would our world look like? In a in a post Epstein world, like this film plays just even more harder. Like it's the the thing that I noticed on my last watch was like how much class commentary there is because I probably hadn't watched it since. I, had I watched it in high school a couple of times and then I rewatched it for my noir class like last year. And it is like, th there's a lot in there about what the rich will do when they are rich and they can do whatever they want. And their humanity is untethered because there's nothing holding them back. And uh, whew, it's dark. That like, I mean, the themes plus the atmosphere in that, I love The Shining more. Um, but like, I am far more terrified by Eyes Wide Shut. Mm. And I think a, a large part of it is just because like that casting, I don't think Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman have ever been cast better in a movie than that one. Cause it is the perfect film for their specific genre, like category of hotness <laughs> where they're both like horrifying people like like just very like beautiful and kind of like cold to look at and like sends a chill down your spine but um also yeah and I saw another tweet recently that said the best thing about it was that it let Tom Cruise be short that maybe mm. um which agreed yeah Alicia that was my tweet was that you? <laughs> yes. Oh my god! In my wow, take that as a compliment because in my mind I was like, the, it was a viral tweet. I mean, you know, maybe it was. <laughs> um, I agree. Yes. It is the yeah. best thing. It is there. There is like that shot of him at the very beginning, um, <laughs> at the party with him and just like two women by his side, and both of them are kind of towering over him. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm 
that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, got to catch up. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to have apparently a bit of a tone shift here. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. Because <laughs> my number four is the Santa Claus. <laughs> um, you know, same, basically the same conversation we just had. <laughs> Critically acclaimed, eat the rich, you know the deal. Sex um, cults. He's going, ah, oh my God, full of it. What do you think that trip to the North Pole was? There is murder. There, well, yeah, me, me, manslaughter. Manslaughter. I don't manslaughter know. Of Maybe Santa some Claus. implied murder. But Santa put himself in that position, right? To be That's on an icy roof. It's oh, not Tim wow. Allen. Wow, okay, fault. Caleb. Like, <laughs> Tim Allen was just defending his property, damn it. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah, I bet he thinks that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my number one. <laughs> um, what, what else can I say about it? I don't know. Tim Allen just being his best bad dad. Um, we love to see the, the transformation of his body there. Um, <laughs> love it. <laughs> love my favorite scene is when his, uh, his heartbeat at the doctor is like, to the tune of jingle bells or whatever just amazing what you can't beat that um and then like i don't know it's just good just good all right number of, uh, wait i i'm sorry i would say the costumes in that movie are fantastic like uh, besides the north pole the mm -hmm. sweaters the judge ryan yeah. <laughs> wears <laughs> and also everything the wife wears i want it's like peak that woman i think of her as like not Courtney Cox. I don't know what her name is, but she has great <laughs> hair and great, it. like, like kind of peasant blouses and mm -hmm. vests, and I want it all. I know. For some reason, like, every, like, I don't know, hot Instagram girl wants to be wearing the sweaters from that movie. Yeah, like, right. that, for some reason, that's their aesthetic. And I'm like, all right, but I can only think of you as being ready for the Santa Claus, being Neil or whatever. Yeah, Neil, the original Visco girl. Yes. I still can't believe that they actually made an entire movie based off of a legal clause um, titled The Santa Claus, but I'm not going to dwell too much. Well, on how, it. how old <laughs> How old were you when you realized that it was a pun? You now, know? I spelled Santa Claus that way for most of my life. <laughs> yes. Um, probably about 12. <laughs> not too long ago, but you know, I had my wits about me. Uh, <laughs> was, was the Santa was it the Santa Claus one two or three that has the the toy soldiers that are the life second, size? Second oh. one. No, second right? Yes, yes. Second one, honestly, really like it. He's trying to get a girl. He so he creates the toy version of himself that is very disturbing. It's uh, it's so it's so scary. Very disturbing. <laughs> The third one is the Jack Frost one, though, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Martin one is Short. the best one. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> I think so. I really love Jack Frost in that movie. <laughs> oh yeah, wait, who plays him? Martin Short. Yeah, Martin. Is it really? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's uh, yeah, they created essentially an entire like cinematic universe. They have <laughs> they have the Tooth Fairy there. They got Mother Nature, the Easter Bunny. Oh. Sandman? Sandman, yeah. Yep. That I rascal, he's always falling asleep. <laughs> Just keeps getting better and better, <laughs> except for the third one. I don't understand how <laughs> that could be Arjun's statement. It peaks at two, and then we don't talk about it from there. <laughs> the The Santa Claus Two is one of my earliest memories of watching something in a movie theater, and I haven't seen it. I don't think since I was probably like six or seven, like watching it on VHS or whatever. But I just looked up like the the picture of the toy Santa that he makes. And I like had chills down my spine. Like it's that... like essentially body horror. <laughs> it yeah. really is. <laughs> oh that is God. the intended reaction. <laughs> I would also just like to say because I assume this will be the last time we talk about Tim Allen ever on this podcast. That <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh -huh. Well, <laughs> um, I would just like to shout out Christmas with the Cranks, which is just. <laughs> Is it okay? Well, of I'll, course. Stop. I'll stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, because yes, me, me too. 
Well, I, I wanted to make sure it wasn't on your list. I don't want to be stepping on your toes here, but no, Christmas no, with the Cranks uh, with Jamie Lee Curtis is a masterpiece. That's all I'll say. It's a horrible <laughs> movie, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, but like a masterpiece nonetheless. <laughs> that is something my sister forces me to watch like every day and i <laughs> but i do it is so fucking stupid that movie is so stupid but like i i cry every time like the the whole like honey baked ham story yeah. or, i'm sorry hickory honey <laughs> ham and when it's jamie lee so curtis <laughs> yeah never say the words hickory honey ham to me oh my god again his best, no, best scene is when he has the like Botox injections. <laughs> he's he's eating like fruit, cubed fruit. Yeah, he's trying to eat like canned peaches at the hospital. He's choking it uh, down like a real man. <laughs> and it's next free, week free on frosty. The, uh, <laughs> free frosty. <laughs> oh yeah, on the Patreon we'll be doing a uh, director's commentary of Christmas with the Cranks. This <laughs> Please, <laughs> I'm, I'm begging. Minute by minute, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, number um, three. <laughs> Caleb, yeah, please get us All right. <laughs> Away from one Christmas horror and on to the next, because yeah. I'm going to pick Black Christmas as my third title. I was going to do Eyes Wide Shut, but, you know, got to pivot uh, to another movie about Christmas that's like, not really about Christmas, but it is, because um, Christmas horror is it's kind of its own genre. But, um, yeah, Black Christmas is an early slasher, 1974. I'm talking about the original, by the way. None of the none of the shitty remakes. Um, and I there's not a whole ton to say about it other than I think it's just a really well put together slasher. Um, it's set in a sorority house, so if you're having nostalgia for college, you can go back <laughs> and and watch it. Um, I, the final. I, I don't really get scared by horror movies just because I watch so many. Um, but the final minute to just the final shot um, chills, like genuine. Wow. That's so creepy. Um, w- way more than most kind of seventies shocky slashers will give me. Um, there's, there's a dark realism to this film that, uh is is lost when you get to stuff like friday the 13th and and whatnot but um yeah i'm gonna go black christmas alicia (laughs) what is your third (laughs) i um thank you (laughs) explicitly promised that you were gonna remember this time too (laughs) Um, I will put, <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, Brooke, thank you, Caleb, for, um, yeah, yeah I think that's gonna keep, that's gonna be a pattern. You, uh, that's right. If there's just dead silence, assume that's you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, also, I want to say I love Black Christmas, too, and I think it's, like, interestingly progressive in certain ways, and one of the scariest slasher villains, um, I've ever, like, seen. Um, or not seen okay so number three I I should probably say White Christmas because it is one of those things I watch like every year sometimes more than once a year sometimes not even at Christmas (laughs) Um, and I love it and I love everyone in it but I don't really feel like talking about it because last night I watched Stalag 17 the Billy Wilder film that kind of like um is genreless in a way. It is about um, a bunch of POWs at a camp uh, in World War II and is, I guess, uh, like kind of like a war comedy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it allows certain things about it to be like very um, brutal as it should be, um, but also takes like, like pokes fun at the Nazis and also like shows this kind of Christmassy kinship between um, all the guys at the camp. And there are some kind of uh, like screwball-y slapsticky elements too. There's kind of this like Abbott and Costello pair of like guys who are like the comic relief for most of it. Um, but William Holden He's the main guy who I think I'd only seen in Sunset Boulevard uh, other than this, but he's awesome. And um, everyone in it is pretty great. And it's like, yeah, it somehow manages to be a war film, a comedy, 
and kind of a mystery like at the center of it is a mystery it doesn't have the feel of a mystery film um but there is kind of like a whodunit aspect um that makes it fun because like my family and I were kind of guessing throughout um basically there's like someone snitching um in this one uh like cabin barrack whatever you call it um of a bunch of guys at the camp someone is snitching to like the um commandant or whatever mm-hmm. about um like certain POWs activity trying to escape and things like that so yeah and it builds tension in really cool ways and with a really interesting use of um music or I guess I should say like percussion um so yeah I would really recommend it It, like has everything basically it like will scare you and like put you on the edge of your seat but also make you laugh a lot yeah that's a wilder that I've been meaning to watch for a while yeah yeah he never disappoints might be a good like dad watch to watch on home Mm. for christmas and it's crazy i it came out like really soon after the war and it it brought to mind um lubich's to be or not to be for me and that came out like i don't know like like basically like like even closer to the war and sadly i also learned the other day that carol lombard like died right before it um came out to be or not to be but it it's in a similar vein it you know makes light of a situation that's really terrible and like was so controversial for its time in um it's like comedic content despite being about nazis um right but it pulls it off well while there was also you know when they were trying to after world war ii really describe the horrors of the holocaust wilder being jewish actually edited and directed a lot of the videos that were like shown to americans that kind of let the gravity of what was actually going on during the holocaust sink in so that kind of adds another layer on top of that of him sort of playing this role in americans realizing what world war ii really was about to and also just a point on william holden i you've seen network right he i think he's he's also in that Oh my God, wait, he is? That must have been he's before the, I like fully knew who, how, how yeah. old is he in that? Oh, yeah, he's he's like the president of the network who's chill with, um, what's her name? Uh, you know, uh, Diane Keaton, is she in network? Uh, yeah. no, Faye Dunaway? Faye Dunaway, yeah. yeah. Faye Dunaway. Holy shit, oh, I need to rewatch it now that yeah. I have like sentience of yeah. William Holden. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Um, my number three, uh, I, I kind of completely moved off of the traditional Christmas movie path, uh, is my favorite superhero movie, actually, of all time, kind of with a bullet. It's Batman Returns. Iron Man 3. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't hate Iron Man 3 as far as my general distaste for Marvel movies goes, but um, Batman Returns really is not only one of my favorite superhero movies ever, but also just one of my favorite movies ever with a cast <laughs> so stacked of Christopher Walken and <laughs> one of my pa- favorite performances ever uh, with Danny DeVito as the Penguin that really I-, I go back and just watch clips of that all the time. Some of the most quotable things ever, which I, I don't want to butcher, so I won't say, but I, I implore everybody just go turn on HBO Max, go watch Batman Returns this Christmas season because it truly is a wonderful performance and maybe kind of predicts Donald Trump back in uh, 1986. I guess Donald Trump was still a thing back then, but predicts his uh, gubernatorial uh, prowess that has come to be a staple of uh, what we know of Donald Trump. And it is (laughs) truly a magnificent movie with uh, Danny DeVito living in the sewers and putting on some of the wackiest performances uh, I've ever seen in my entire life. I really love that movie. <laughs> Arjun, did you also tweet about Danny DeVito as the penguin? Because I am now also confusing my Twitter feed with just like <laughs> that <laughs> also came to my mind. I'm sure. Yeah, you did. I was like, did, did I see did someone else do this, or was that was that you as well? I don't remember it explicitly, but I, I'm sure I probably did because that performance lives rent free in my head, twenty four seven. Uh, his, his most iconic quote being just the pussy I was looking for <laughs> in response to uh, seeing Catwoman for the first time so great movie go check it out 
A quote we can all use on the regular. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I don't know if this pairing between Arjun and then me going is working well, but yeah, another tone shift. Um, I'm going to go with uh, number three, very basic again. Um, Love Actually. This is one that I like did not grow up watching and watched for the first time like three years ago. I don't know. It's just like British people being hot and being cute. Like what else? What else do you need from a movie? It's just like everything that I want from Harry Potter during Christmas. <laughs> um, but yeah, just good. What's the little the little kid that then was in Game of Thrones? We've like Thomas Brody Sangster. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's just him at his peak adorableness. Um, and then he like grew up and did weird stuff like Maze Runner, <laughs> but you know, he's still cute now. I don't, I don't Queen's think... Gambit, he's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. And wearing a cowboy hat and being good at chess. Ugh, we love to see his growth. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Love Actually, I watched it like I think a couple weeks ago, and it just gets me in, gets me in the good vibes, just like it. And everyone's cute, and everyone deserves love at an airport but yeah love actually <laughs> is my number three so we're moving right along to number two right mm -hmm. are we going to have a section post our list where it's like quick fire honorable mentions yes we can do I would honorable love it. mentions okay we can talk about recent watches that are christmas or not christmas related okay Gotcha. Well, see, I have, I've been making my list as I go along and I have like five movies I want to talk about, but only two slots. So <laughs> we're going to, we're going to talk about Die Hard now. It's about time we talk about Die Hard. Um, unless it was Die Hard on any of y'all's list, because otherwise I'll save it for then. I've right. seen it. Ne okay. Okay. So I was, I can't judge you because I watched it for the first time about a week ago. Um, and it's on HBO Max, Arjun, and I know you have HBO Max, so you got to yeah. solve that. Um, but it's it, it's a Christmas movie. Like we were talking about before we started recording, the discourse is tired. I'm not going to talk about the discourse. Uh, it's just a damn good action movie, and I'm not a big action fan. I My eyes tend to glaze over when action happens <laughs> for whatever reason. I'm just bored by it. Um, unless it's well done and this is certainly an example of a well done action flick uh bruce willis is just unstoppable and um and uh hans gruber played by uh somebody give me the assist what's his name alan rickman got it um uh his Dave. villain Dave. is just, yes yes um <laughs> His villain is just probably one of the best action villains. Um, there's not much I can say about Die Hard that hasn't already been said. Um, but it's it's quotable. It's fun. It, you know, it's just great. It's it's just uh, it's just a great time. Uh, so, yeah, Die Hard's going to be my number two. OK, it's my turn. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, also, I wanted to comment on Love Actually, which I actually did love um, for most of my life. Um, and to the point where, like, yeah, I would sometimes it would be like April, and I'd be like, I I need to watch this, like, just get it out of my system. But then that Jezebel article kind of ruined my life. Oh my god, um, I haven't read it. What is it? <laughs> it. It, it just walks you through the absurdity and frustrating everything mm -hmm. about that movie. Um, focusing sometimes a little bit too much, I guess, on the horrible hats that Laura Lenny wears. Actually, no, it's, it's, completely, um, mm -hmm. it's completely valid. But um, I, I'll send it to you. <laughs> but now, like, I'm at the point where, like, I can't unsee most characters in that movie as being like terrible people yeah i i can like i just can't watch it anymore which is frustrating because i used to really enjoy it i mean i don't know maybe it's for the best anyway my number two is tangerine mm -hmm. um it is such a special movie i mean you know like uh whatever shot on iphone aside 
uh film school porn aside like sean baker fanboys like aside um it's just such a special movie in the way that it kind of makes you feel everything it's hilarious it makes me like bark out loud several times um especially the parts with uh james ransone um and the the performance of um i mean the, the two lead performances are incredible and like so tender and real and hilarious and um the performance of toyland by doris day makes me want to cry um and it's just like it it's just surprising kind of at every turn it's just a really incredible movie and uh, it is very christmasy in the end like it it it's weird how it mixes the like acid brightness of los angeles with and like the the heat and the kind of like you can almost smell that movie especially since moving to la i kind of like understand <laughs> um but it, it it mixes that with the somehow like the feeling of christmas um which is cool so yeah tangerine baby that's that's a really good pick um i didn't even think about how it's a christmas movie um but i really do love i love tangerine for it it's being a a trans sex worker in los angeles person of color as well is it just about the farthest from my lived in experience that you can get and i think that that film is so incredible for portraying that and making me feel like i obviously like i can't fully understand the the lives of some the people portrayed in that film but the the incredible empathy that film uh, shows um, its two main characters um, is just so moving and um, I think it's a great pick and I'm glad that you talked about it because I, I had forgotten it was a Christmas movie in, in parts. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> is it my turn, right? I don't know. I don't know what order we're in. But, it's uh, actually uh, always my turn. So. <laughs> <laughs> we said whenever there's silence, we should be done. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my pick is Phantom Thread uh, as my number two. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, I don't really have much else to say except for that one shot of um, Vicky Creeps and the Daniel Day-Lewis uh, dancing in a big ballroom as balloons are all strewn about around as them. As New Year's happens. <laughs> on New Year's it's Eve. It's a New Year's movie, Arjun. Yeah, is that not the holidays? Oh, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> i mean come on and it's just like that whole movie just radiates winter vibes you know the gorgeous dresses and the big fluffy coats it just makes me want to curl up in a fucking blanket and watch it until i fall asleep and um yeah the movie's like a damn lullaby to me and it just makes me think of the holidays more than anything so uh phantom thread <laughs> nice <laughs> I left the movie theater when it was playing. No. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Like, I, I don't know what part I dropped out at. He was just so fucking weird. And I had like homework to do. This is at Kimball. This is like during the, the film festival. And I was like, I'm, I'm too tired for this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll give it, give it another shot since it's Arjun's second favorite holiday movie. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's one of the like. Oh man, Brooke, that's one of my favorite movies of the decade. I don't understand it. He was like, "What is the thing that he calls her? He calls her like something weird." And I was like, "I'm piecing out. I don't." I, Did I don't, you? In- did you at least get to the point where he looks at her and, and says, are you an, a special agent sitting here to ruin my evening and possibly my entire life? I don't know. That he, line reading lives, that, speaking of rent free in your head, that line <laughs> reading uh, repeat in my head. That's how I feel about chic, fucking chic. <laughs> Guys, I still have not seen it. And yet for some reason, I listen to the Johnny Greenwood score a lot. The great score. Mm. Um, yeah, anyway, just confession. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to rewatch that now. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to time it for New Year's and I'm going to watch it like as the clock strikes. 
2021. Nice. That's my plan. <laughs> wow. We have- Honestly, not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> oh boy. My my number two is gonna be another cinematic masterpiece in genuinely, I believe, uh, in the Polar Express. Fucking trains. I love them. I love hot cocoa. I literally, guys, I literally took tap dancing classes in part because of the Polar Express. So I can, uh, did tap dancing for two years in college. I'm very bad, but I can do it. And I have the shoes and I will whip them out at a moment's notice, just at any beck and call, I'll be there. Um, and just who doesn't love hot chocolate? I don't know. The music's great. I listen to it on a regular basis, singing the little songs. We got Tom Hanks. Oh, his voice is just beautiful. Trains are cool. Love trains. Uh, don't particularly like the depiction of elves in this movie. They're a little weird. I think they could have been more magical. Um, but yeah, it's just funny and it's good and it's beautiful. And that's yes, I just love trains. That's it. <laughs> I have never heard somebody use the word beautiful to describe uh, that Polar Express uh, motion yeah. capture movie in my entire life. I will <laughs> back you up, Brooke. I yeah, am exactly. so with you, Brooke. Uh, I don't get why people think it's disconcerting. I love it. Maybe it's because I watched it when I was like, whatever, seven or eight or whenever that movie came out. Uh, but Polar Express is great. And it was, it was maybe going to be my number one. So I'm glad you picked it now and we can just talk about it. Um, because <laughs> I love the Polar Express. Um, I remember it because I watched it when like you're at that age of like, is Santa real? Like you're starting to question like the reality that your parents have presented to you. And then you're, you know, my cynicism at a young age started to grow. And then I watched this movie and I remember like, like just crying when like Santa's there and the kid can hear the bells and it's just so good um and then that sentimentality carried all the way until high school because every year um we performed like a for uh, my band did um like a Christmas opus or whatever and uh we we played like a suite from um from the from the Polar Express and every year, the, the senior most alto saxophone would get a solo on Believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, a, it's, it was always a very emotional moment because, you know, it's a freshman alto. You're looking up to the senior alto who's like mentored you and like led you through the year. And then you're watching him like do his send off and then you work your way up. And I had that solo as a senior. Wait, you played alto sax? I played alto sax. Yeah. I played sax, but for a very short period of time. <laughs> I, I quit because it was too heavy <laughs> to carry. <laughs> I wasn't dedicated to my art. Wow. <laughs> Should we so, make this into a, a saxophone podcast? Yeah, Arjun, yes. what about, <laughs> where do you stand on the saxophone? <laughs> Uh, I played the recorder uh, growing up. <laughs> Numerous other instruments, but none of them uh, of the, what, what kind of instrument is it? Brass? Woodwind. The woodwind. Know. Woodwind variety. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm sorry, but you, do do none of you guys find the Polar Express to be like a major uncanny valley? Or yes, I, no, I, I, <laughs> I also recently was like, okay, I have not seen this since I was a child. <laughs> And the only things I've seen of it recently are like, I think on one of the Harry Potter DVDs, there's that, you remember like how the marketing for this was like a really long, it was just like the first scene in the movie, right? I think it like on the third Harry Potter movie or something, something we watch a lot. I see that all the time. And there is something like you know you just get a glimpse of it and it's very haunting and I was like oh I think I remember this movie being like haunting but in kind of a cool way and like in a magical way and recently it was on tv and I was like you know I'm gonna see if this like was actually good or if it makes me want to like crawl out of my skin and yeah I watched about like (laughs) three minutes maybe it is 
a one-way ticket to the uncanny valley <laughs> i can't like i really i can't condone it i'm sorry Just like, <laughs> pr- pretend you're playing a, a ps3 game and let it vibe okay <laughs> okay yeah, okay I yeah i really don't i don't know they're no i don't know it, it's fine for me <laughs> i'm like i guess there's some like spooky undertones which maybe caleb subconsciously likes um definitely <laughs> like definitely with the there's like the ghost train rider I, tom hanks just brings it fucking home for me like his performance he plays like seven characters in it or whatever and he's just so good and then the music like i literally will listen to the soundtrack like just independently sing all the parts um yeah i think in terms of the uncanny valley like i said i don't like i think the elves look weird and then that's it i don't know i'm fine with the children i just like the little message i asked for there's just something what is the message brooke tell me what the message is believing believing Believe <laughs> that's what it is it's but like and not just santa but yourself yes. and love and family yeah we have but a, like what if uh, when you, you know, grow what <laughs> what about like, when you grow up he still hears the bell that's <laughs> that's the that's the message Sa- santa is not just santa the physical form but it's <laughs> the general belief in You're- goodness in the world it's the it's gener- like what happens if you don't believe <laughs> I mean, you're an atheist. And you're a little... Even Jesus, right? My understanding (laughs) is it's like... Santa. (laughs) Like, it's like if the kid believes in Santa hard enough, he'll get the bells. But if he doesn't believe in Santa hard enough, he won't get the bells. And It's not like a degree. It's not like hard to not hard. It's like, it's a binary yes or no. But only one person gets the present, right? Yeah, no, no, no. You have missed the point of this. Yo, wait, why does he get the present when he's the last one to fucking believe, huh? Just because right? his name is Hero Boy? Yeah, but they <laughs> yeah. really sets him up for... <laughs> also, also, how come for this magical train, if you lose your ticket, you can't just, like, look on a directory and find out that he was, like, on the list of people? Like, there's it, just so yeah. many inconsistencies. It do, it's inconsistent because we know, we know there's Picking only apart. one rule. We know there's only one rule. It's something to do with hot chocolate, right? Can hot you chocolate. tell me what it is? No, we got it. Hot, hot, Don't hot, hot chocolate. Spill the hot chocolate. Is that it? Never ever let it cool. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Santa's so magic, Thank why you. can't he I, my just? My name is Griffin Newman. Good night. <laughs> no, 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 I think that's okay. Let's let's be serious here for a moment. I take this film very seriously. It's no Phantom Thread, but you know, um, no, no, no. I think it's mostly about kind of like similar vibes with the Santa Claus. It's just something so like pure and simple about like wanting to believe in something like magical and believing in yourself and like the <clears throat> the messages or whatever is to like be a leader. I don't know. It's just just nice. I asked for a bell and it's it's like he's not asking for something physical or whatever and I think that's the reason that Santa chooses him is because it's supposed to be this like age of skepticism or whatever. It's just about having a little childish wonder in you. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> all I see is an animated character, Arjun. That's all. Uh, it, it might be. It might be the fact that I like watched it as a kid, and so I have blinders on when I watch the Polar Express. But like, it's guys. Like every bone in my body is cynical and is like defeatist about the world and very pessimistic, but. Just let me have this like one <laughs> moment. No, believe in something. I think I I don't want to. Sp- I don't know when the last time you guys watched the Polar Express was, but like two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago. I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. <laughs> I would implore you, and I think we should have a further conversation yeah. on a different episode Sorry, about yeah. this. Right. Listen, or I actually I live I, commentary I, track. <laughs> I think I think. I get it. I think there's something very, very strange and off-putting about it <laughs> that can that can like swing wildly between like good and bad. 
Um, and but however, <laughs> Hanks, I think, is not one of the I'm it's a lot of barking from Hanks. It's like listening to James Cagney in like stereo sound for like several hours. It it starts to hurt a little bit. Um, but no, I get, I sort of semi almost kind of get it. <laughs> you do have to, you do have to give the film credit for being like so weird and original. Yes. Like there hasn't, I can't think of a Christmas movie in, in the last decade. Let's think 2010 to 2019 that like played on this level of like expensive originality. It is a blockbuster that is like its own Christmas story that, I mean, maybe it was based on a book. I don't it know. It was based on a book. Okay. <laughs> a book which I, like, is another element of, like, I love Chris Van Allsburg more than, like, anything in the world. And I do I do think the movie does a good job of, like, his illustrations are so, like, otherworldly and unique. And, like, they have this serenity that's a little bit haunting that I think the movie does, which is cool. But I'm sorry, continue. Uh, that's I, I mean <laughs> uh, I think we can put the the bull express to rest um, we'll do a whole episode on it someday I'm honestly, not honestly man, gotta I'm do a follow up. <laughs> um, are, we, are we moving on to, to number yeah, one uh, bring yeah. it into the station with number one <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going with a classic Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer oh. um, it is the probably the Christmas movie I've seen the most um, other than maybe Maybe weirdly Frosty Returns. Mm. I feel like I see that movie every year, like on accident. Um, Frosty Returns aside, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, there's claymation um, is is magical to me still, or just maybe claymation's the wrong term. Stop motion animation, um, and there's a level of artistry to it that I really appreciate and have continued to appreciate, and it's like it still fills me with like childlike wonder watching like these real life little puppets move around. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just look at the characters in Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer, like Yukon Cornelius, great character. Uh, the Abominable Snowman, great yeah. character. <laughs> Hermes, the elf who wants to be a dentist. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. My little brother um, got used to get made fun of when he was a kid because he looked like Hermes. The, oh. <laughs> the elf can, you send, can you send Can you send pictures? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll try to put, put a picture in the YouTube video. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just remember my grandma had this on VHS and one of my just like favorite childhood memories is driving up to visit my grandma and she loves movies and she's like the only other movie lover in my family and so like she would it would just be me and my grandma hanging out uh watching like vhs copy of this and like a year without a santa claus and like those those sort of stop motion animation specials um yeah i i have a real affection for rudolph there and this reindeer yeah great movie i love this the songs are so good especially mm uh silver and gold what a what a banger <laughs> <laughs> um i love that pick um and i so i was thinking about doing a charlie brown christmas but i wasn't sure because it's like 25 minutes long and also <laughs> <laughs> also my top pick like i don't know if it would get mentioned otherwise and i love it so so much so i'm going to talk about the Shop Around the Corner, which speaking of Ernst Lubitsch is another one. So it turns out to be or not to be and The Shop Around the Corner were both made like during, technically during the war. Um, Shop Around the Corner was 1940 and it's the OG You've Got Mail. Um, that's like, it's basically the, the original source material there. So it's like a rom-com with Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan. Um, in Budapest in the like like time leading up to the war um and it's really just like one of the most charming movies you'll ever see it's like impossible not to be charmed by it and it's also sad in a lot of ways like the it deals with like the warmth of the holidays as well as the like overwhelming loneliness unfortunately for some people um what isn't Christmas like 
like doesn't it have one of the highest suicide rates or something like that oh, i don't know i've heard that in life um which is sad but like i think that that's something that i don't see not just like suicide on christmas i mean just like the um the fact that it's so family centric yeah. um and like how that can be like cripplingly lonesome for some people it deals with that without you know going too sad or like too tragic most of it um is really interesting in terms of like the political setting and just really sweet in terms of the like central romance and um it has like one of the best kind of um confession of love monologues that i've ever heard so i would highly 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 recommend to like anyone you can watch with your family it's super i think it's like a crowd pleaser um yeah one of my favorite movies like of all time actually i think oh cool um yeah all right my, my pick I, I would say is also a nice crowd pleasing family centric affair uh, the Good Luck Charlie Christmas, but no, I'm kidding. Um, that was one of the ones that popped up in a letterbox list of the best Christmas movies when I was looking this up for research, though. So maybe I will have to check that out at some point. But um, that's a whole previous... other episode. It's like <laughs> TV Christmas specials and your Ooh, favorites. That is yeah. a really good point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, my my number one holiday movie is Uncut Gems, a movie I just <laughs> watched for oh. the first time, or uh, for like the, I, I suppose according to my letterbox, I just rewatched it for the fifth time uh, two days ago. I, I have it on Blu-ray, DVD, multi-format, and uh, was feeling myself uh, a little bit drunk a couple nights ago, and was just like, you know what would really hit the spot right now? Uh, watching a little- a, An anxiety gems. attack? <laughs> Well, it's to the point at this point where, you know, having seen it a couple times and knowing what's coming at the end, it's really more soothing than anything. And you really get to enjoy uh, his big wins throughout the movie without having to feel the pressure of what's coming next. So I, I don't find it quite the anxiety attack that I did uh, the first time or two that I saw it. Um, but it really is a wonderful movie and really got me in the holiday spirit, which I, I don't think I was until I watched it, weirdly enough, despite having one scene of a reference to Hanukkah and no uh, references to the holidays besides that, um, really just made me feel uh, really at peace. And as somebody who, I'm not a super religious person, my, my family celebrates Christmas, but like the commercialized version of Christmas, not any sort of religious version. So I don't really have any like bearings or ties to uh, any sort of Christmas um, spirit I suppose despite you know liking the season and liking the jolly fat man with the beard um and uncut gems and the pure high uh that he gets from winning those bets really just uh you know embodies the Christmas spirit for me and it uh, put me in a holiday mood and uh, not the Christmas spirit the holiday spirit the winter <laughs> spirit the, I, I randomly associate that movie also with the, the holidays and I think it's because I probably saw it like yeah. around Christmas <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's I, also I'm... my most rewatched movie of 2020. I guarantee yeah. it. I've probably seen it four or five times. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat because I, I took a trip up to New York City because I the trailer was so good. I was like, I just need to see this movie right now. So last December, I, I took the train up and I was just like, I got to see this two weeks before Christmas. And then and you're probably right. That's probably why it sort of lives in my head as a uh, holiday season movie. Not gonna lie, I was not expecting to talk about Phantom Thread and Uncut Gems in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Arjun. <laughs> um, all right, I'll, I'll bring us home with, I'm going for sentimentality over quality here. Um, although this movie <clears throat> is also fabulous in every way. Uh, I think you guys thought I was kidding about this, but literally Barney's Night Before Christmas is my number one pick. Um, like we, the dinosaur? Yes, the purple dinosaur. Okay. Um, you know him. We know him. You, you weren't confusing it for anything of higher quality. Um, I don't even remember like watching, watching Barney particularly like as a small child. Um, but we always, my parents and I always watch this for some reason. Um, and so we've just kept the tradition alive, uh, even though I'm pretty sure 
my dad um, is close to suicidal ideation each time we plug it in. Um, <laughs> but you know, he according song- to Alicia, that's part of the holiday yeah, season. Yeah, God, <laughs> he's in his own spirit that way. He's like, ah, yeah. yes, I'm on the verge. <laughs> uh, actually, all of those numbers are just viewers of Barney's Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> it really tips you over the edge if you're already there. Um, but no, no. It's a fun family watch for everyone. It's basically my favorite musical. Um, Yeah, I just get really into the dance numbers there. It's not good by any means. It's great. And (laughs) um, yeah, I literally do a little dance. There's one about like wrapping up presents. I think it's honestly one of my favorite like depictions of Santa Claus. I have no idea who the actor is but he looks like the best grandpa in the world that has like a mean sugar cookie recipe. And I just want to like sit on his lap in a very non-sexual way just to like get some love. (laughs) Um, But yeah, he's adorable. Basically the plot, um, I'm sure you guys have all seen it, but in case you need a reminder, um, (laughs) Barney, Barney and friends are like, oh my gosh, no one ever fills Santa's stocking. And then they have a little snow globe and they journey to the North Pole by some sort of dinosaur magic. Um, And then they make little gifts for Santa and they put them in his stocking um, and everyone just has a great time. And I don't know, it's it's classic, like maybe 90s is when I think it was made. It, It has, or like early 2000s, but yeah, really good. Love all like, like I could perform all of the songs and my Christmas literally like does not feel complete unless we watch Barney's Night Before Christmas. So would recommend, we'll watch it on Christmas Eve for the rest of my life um, to the detriment of my family. <laughs> but yeah. You're, you're uh, not going to believe this actually, but I just looked it up and it turns out the actor who played Santa Claus is actual real life Santa Claus down from the North Pole. So, <laughs> Oh my God, that. that makes perfect sense. I knew that he was not playing a role. He was playing himself. <laughs> Like, sorry you, for stepping bro. on your toes caleb <laughs> yeah. no i i was gonna give the real facts about the guy who played him but your fact is better <laughs> yes. well did we want to move into a short segment of honorable mentions or new watches yeah let's do it uh i'll rattle some off um kiss kiss bang bang is that a christmas movie i think so uh it takes place over the holiday season at least in my memory um i didn't look it up to fact check myself so uh if if um one of our viewers wants to yell at me uh they're more than welcome to uh we'll also mention the frosty the snowman i did mention those animated uh movies i definitely have an affection to because my grandpa loves frosty the snowman that's like his favorite holiday uh like mascot and so I'd always watch it with him. The Year Without a Santa Claus, I mentioned. Um, we No, we didn't talk about A Christmas Story, um, mm. which is one of the classics that like people older than us really love and are attached to. Um, but it's, 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 a, it's a little delight. It's, it's other than like the weird anti-Asian racism at the end, uh, which is just so unnecessary and so unfunny and it comes out of nowhere and it just it it really rang like there was a producer on the movie who just like really was like feeling racist and was like (laughs) have this scene in there the film doesn't get made um is that because they like go get like chinese food on christmas night or yeah. something like that yeah the, the fararara thing yeah Yeah. Yeah. i'm saying that because i'm (laughs) (laughs) It, uh, it, honestly i was having a perfectly delightful time with it and it's just so cringe at the end it, like... i used to laugh at that i used to <laughs> laugh <laughs> i'm guessing i probably did too I'm, i don't know it's... well it's all a growth uh we're all on a journey <laughs> right <laughs> yeah um we'll also uh we didn't talk about nightmare before christmas um which i think deserves a one of the shout outs for being a movie you can watch on Halloween as well as Christmas and be satisfied with both. Um, and uh, I'm, 
last final shout out is an anti shout out and i'm glad we didn't talk about uh national lampoon's christmas vacation mm -hmm. because chevy chase is a smug asshole and i really detested that movie when i watched it with my parents the other year <laughs> All right, fuck them. Okay. <laughs> I think it's really something that you grow like I did not grow up with it and I yeah, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um let's see. Okay. Well, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention uh 2017's Pottersville <laughs> starring Michael Shannon, Judy Greer, Christina Hendricks, Thomas Lennon, Ian, Mc Ian McShane, Ron Perlman and everyone else who's ever lived in a star-studded um absolute mystery of a film i uh, i want to talk about the plot of it but it's like a spoiler i highly 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 encourage all of you to ingest some sort of substance mm -hmm. and watch this film um and you know if you don't get through all of it that's okay i don't th i think i did but with like it was with a lot of toil um <laughs> but it is one of the most batshit things i've ever seen in my life it is also one of the most horrible things i've ever seen in my life um but i can't tell you what happens in it because when it does you will combust um it i'm sorry i'm gonna check the rotten tomato score uh what do we got we got a uh come on come on come on hello it has an awful letterbox score <laughs> um, what is it it's 2.1 okay that's not that bad um but i guess <laughs> all of my my friends on letterbox have given it one star or a half star i think it's the kind of thing yeah okay wait does it have a z does it have a zero percent on the tomatoes <laughs> yes it has a zero percent <laughs> It takes a certain um, intellectual curiosity to really understand it. I, I don't expect you. Uh... <laughs> um, Pottersville is one of two things, the worst Christmas movie ever or the best Christmas movie ever. Um, I can tell you which one of those it is. But anyway, um, another one that I, for some reason, like I watched this every weekend at my friend's house. Any unaccompanied minors fans in the house? <laughs> Uh, no? Okay. Never saw it. <laughs> Imagine a group of ragtag um, under 18s are stuck in an airport overnight oh. when um, heavy snow blocks all the runways and um, Lewis Black, the um, Scrooge-like, I guess he runs the airport. What do you call someone who runs an airport? He's that. Um, he just like hates the kids for some reason and doesn't want them to like have Christmas and they're like determined to like go around on like the little golf carts and like do random shit oh I think they're trying to like do something for the main character's little sister to like give her a good Christmas it's not good but um it's great and Mindy Kaling and like a bunch of random other people just kind of pop up in it it's from like <laughs> um it's from the year the when i google unaccompanied minors it does not give me what i want i just realized um, <laughs> <laughs> um it's Better from probably our when we were in middle school okay next is mickey's once upon a christmas i don't know if anybody mm. noticed my zoom name today yeah um <laughs> but scrooge mcduck in honor of the great scrooge mcduck um i i mean i live for huey dewey and louie mm -hmm. and anything goofy related i actually wrote a paper in school about um how like mickey mouse every you know everyone talks about how mickey mouse was born out of the character like chaplin's character of the little tramp mm -hmm. i made the case that goofy <laughs> is a um kind of a, a a parallel with a twist anyway uh better watch out i just watched the first time it's awesome. It came out, what, like less than 10 years ago? And it has that kid, Levi Miller, um, who's just like a kid and everything, you know? I don't know if he's still around really, but it's a like a, a fun kind of psychological slasher. Um, and everyone in it and like the people who made it are Australian. It was filmed in Sydney. 
but it's American and everyone just has American accents in it, which is fun. Um, but it's really good. It has like um, a twist that I didn't see coming that was cool. And, but like, it doesn't kind of uh, fizzle out once the twist happens, which is hard to do. Uh, any of the Little Women adaptations pretty much. Mm. I mean, Greta's is like, like pretty high up there. Mm. Um, Christmas in Connecticut is great. And then all the other ones I have uh, have been mentioned. Yeah, um, both Grinches, uh, and there might be more than two, but the animated yeah. one and the Jim Carrey one, big fan of both of those. Was going to also say Little Women, but just the Greta Gerwig one. I, I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, Christian Bale. Um, forgetting who else is in that. Is Kirsten Dunst in that Winona one? Winona Ryder, Chris, Kirsten <laughs> Dunst, um, K uh, Kate, uh, blah, 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 Claire Danes, sorry. Oh, Claire Danes, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the only other one I've seen and wasn't as big of a fan of that one. But then um, past that, um, the original High School Musical, and uh, that's all I've got. Interesting. That is kind of Christmas vibes, don't they? I like was thinking New Year's vibes. Yeah, New Year's. Yeah. The original, like the first opening 15 minutes or so were all New Year's, and you know, he's hooping. He doesn't want to go give his attention to the other teens at the. Uh, Teen snow, party. <laughs> snow, snow party. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then he sings karaoke and uh, it's, it's awesome. So a big, is born. <laughs> big, big fan of those movies. Haven't yet checked out the uh, series on Disney plus, but perhaps over this oh, nice so break. Musical. It is excellent. I'm not being like, I don't have a shred of irony in what I'm saying right now. <laughs> like it is great. I really recommend it. I will yeah. maybe check it out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm out of everything else first. Um, all right, my honorable mentions: uh, the holiday, another pretty basic one. Jude Law being hot, and then Jack Black being surprisingly hot. <laughs> like, no offense to Jack Black, but like, has anyone seen his like Instagram or like his TikToks or whatever he's doing? Where his YouTube channel. Yeah, he, like, I don't know what it is, but I'm like, he would be a surprisingly tender lover. <laughs> like, he's just <laughs> bouncing around. I don't know. But yeah, the holiday, also great. I want to live in England in a little cottage uh, and be with Jude Law. Um, what else? Oh, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's seen this. Uh, Nick Cage's best movie, The Family Man, where has anyone seen it? A great Christmas movie. Like genuinely, I mean, National Treasure is his best performance in my opinion, but this is a close second. Is that uh, the one where like he is like a rich banker and then he has, yeah, yeah, I've seen that movie. Yeah, yeah good movie. I like that movie. <laughs> He's a rich banker and then can't remember what happens it's been a while since i've seen it it was just one of those ones it's like a parallel universe thing right yeah, and he like it, turns uh, into oh, like I a he may he might be like being robbed or something but anyways he wakes up <laughs> the next morning and he's he took a different path in life a sliding door situation and he uh has sex with his like college sweetheart or whatever who's like a non-profit lawyer and he has children and he hates them and he's poor and he hates being poor but he's discovered the true meaning of life, which is being poor, but happy <laughs> in America. We can't let our poor people be sad. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that one, Family Man, what else? Some recent watches that I've had. What was the like animated one on Netflix? Like Klaus? Klaus, yeah. Klaus, yeah. yeah. Good. like really loved it <laughs> so like was funny it was adorable which is my qualifications for any movie adorable I will love it <laughs> um so yeah Klaus um and then weirdly Bad Mom's Christmas with uh, Mila Kunis uh really good like it was really funny obviously not amazing but just a fun gal pals having fun watching Santa strip um and being bad moms as the title might suggest uh just something to aspire to um that's in a if we did a top five prosthetic dicks um in film 
Mm-hmm. Bad Mom's Christmas has to be included in that. <laughs> no, uh, don't spoil anything. <laughs> I I watched uh, half of that movie actually the other day because I went over to hang out with my girlfriend and she tricked me and said, oh, I'm not doing anything. And when I got there, she was like, oh, we're watching Bad Mom's Christmas. <laughs> um, the only way to get someone to watch it. Um, <laughs> and then Happiest Season not as good as I would have hoped. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was just basically angry at the main character the entire time. Kristen Stewart was her normal, stuttering, awkward self, which, you know, she does She does it well. Um, but yeah, watched it for Dan Levy. I was on a Schitt's Creek kind of a marathon watching over the past couple of, couple of months. He was good in it. He because he basically just plays himself. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like slightly annoying, um, but funny man. And then, yeah, but not as good as I would have hoped, but still consumed it. Shout out Aubrey Plaza. Yeah, um, Aubrey Plaza was the hit of that movie. <laughs> yeah, she really was. Um, she She's had a really good year, hasn't she? Uh, have any of you guys seen Black Bear? No, I, I almost did the other night. I know I need to. That will, I'll, I'll let, I'll leave that to our best of 2020 wow. uh, uh, time because that, that'll probably make my list mm. um, for our episode. But yeah, I liked Happiest Season fine. It, it was a, I mean, I I did I, I feel like I went in with high expectations because there was that one weekend where everybody was praising it and talking about it on Twitter, mm. um, and yeah, the the entire time I just like had distaste for uh, what's her name the, the the character of the family that you go visit. Yeah, um, I don't even, I don't even remember. Because she really McKenzie. does some terrible things to Kristen Stewart. Davis. Davis. Just like emotionally abusing her. Yeah. The whole movie. She is a bitch and she's oh my god. I no, shout out my favorite character in that was the sister. The one, the other mm. sister, the weird one that like has the book idea. I loved her. She was she was so funny. She's really funny. She was so good. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Allison Brie is in a movie. Usually I love Allison Brie, just I don't know why. I just think she's great. Um, but I did not like her in Happiest Season. Yeah. I think she's fine in it. Just the character is so annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, but that—that yeah, that is the, that's the character. I have not seen it, but Mackenzie Davis. I don't want to hear any slander because she is so good in that one Black Mirror episode. Holy too. Oh yeah, and Blade Runner. She's in oh, Blade Runner. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Terminator Dark Fate. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, oh, isn't she sense. also in like The Martian? <laughs> I think she's in The Martian. Yeah. God, I fucking hate The Martian. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I hate it. <laughs> I, I hate it, it and like my parents' love for it makes me hate it more. <laughs> he makes p- potatoes out of poopy. It's so, it's literally, it's like one of the least memorable movies I've ever seen. <laughs> Mackenzie Davis also was in my least favorite movie of this year. Uh, Turning or the turning with the annoying little kid from Stranger Things. In Wolfhard. Horrible, horrible yeah. movie. I saw it because I still had uh, Regal Unlimited and mm-hmm. the movie theater was still open. So thank God. Like I, I miss, I would watch the turning in a theater right now if I could. But <laughs> Oh, doesn't shit. that also do like Brooklyn Prince dirty? Isn't she in that? From Florida Project, little girl. Maybe. I think oh, she wait. Is. That's an adaptation of The Turn of the Screw. Uh, which is oh, the Bly Manor. Yeah. Um, and the I watched The Innocence recently, um, which is the 1960 film ver- version of oh. The Turn of the Screw. Instant, Good segue. Talk about, talk about what you're talking about. What you've been watching lately, Caleb? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> the last since the last time we did this. It's been about a month, and in that month, I had COVID, where I was only by myself, and like all I had was movies. So <laughs> there's genuinely probably like 40 films on this list. I won't name all 40. I'll just name the highlights. Uh, you let's could see. rattle them off really fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I started off. Oh, my God. This is so far back since because it, it was Thanksgiving, right? All right. Boat Travail. Good. Ocean's 12. Good. Underrated. Ocean's 13. Fine. Fine time. <laughs> Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2. I had a, an epiphany. Uh, Kill Bill Volume 2 is so, so good. And I did not realize how good Kill Bill Volume 2 was until like I had seen it years ago 
then I had a really awful relationship that was just so toxic. And then I got past that relationship and now I watch Kill Bill Volume 2 and I'm like, I get it. I understand the emotional resonance. Like at first it made no sense to me back in high school, but now, <laughs> but now I understand. Fall Out Boy wrote a whole song about it. Which, <laughs> which song? Well, it's kind of a mix because it says she wants to dance like Uma Thurman, which is Pulp Fiction, but then it says uh... bury me till I'm whatever, which is Kill Bill Volume 2. Never mind. Continue. I'm sorry. One of the I greatest have. artists. <laughs> um yeah kill bill great um watched it with my little brother who hadn't seen it so that's great uh time kill bill uh the the new documentary i'm gonna save that for maybe end of the year list uh episode um then happy season we talked about mangrove again probably save it for end of year 2020 i know it's gonna at least be in arjun's list uh because he was a big fan of it uh the Grinch, but not the good Grinches, the bad one, the, uh, what is it? What is that studio? Uh, is that DreamWorks? Is it the Benedict Cumberbatch one? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not good. It's it's really not good. Um, the Innocence, like I talked about, I finished uh, Albert Brooks's filmography, um, which is one of the greatest quarantine discoveries for me. His films are so funny and so full of like a relatable anxiety uh, and I really love them. So I watched his his two worst, quote unquote, worst films, um, The Muse, 1999, and uh, Looking for Comedy in the Muslim World, 2005. Um, surprisingly really good, uh, like post Bush, post 9-11, like mid 2000s, mid aughts commentary um, and has a scene where he tries to do an improv that killed me uh really great uh shit house gonna also save that one for the end of year 2020 sound of metal um which is not gonna be on my end of year 2020 list but i think should be talked about because uh has two of the best performances in uh riz ahmed and paul racy and the sound editing in that is brilliant um and its ending also really moved me um, I rewatched Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? and Burn After Reading, back-to-back Coen Brothers. Um, Arjun got me to watch Burn After Reading. Masterpiece. Um, you're right. No, you're right. And I'm glad that you corrected me because I used to think that that was one of my least favorite Coen Brothers. But I guess now now that I live in the D.C. area, I'm like, ah, I get it now. Lots of epiphanies <laughs> well, in this episode for me. Weirdly enough, just today, that Russian reporter who called Putin and like got them on tape saying that the Kremlin poisoned him. Did you guys hear about this? No. So a Russian reporter, yeah, called the like tricked the Kremlin into admitting on, on tape that they poisoned him. His favorite movie is Burn After Reading. So I feel quite vindicated that uh, this journalist in the middle of this uh, political turmoil out in <laughs> Russia is uh, similarly a fan of the Coen Brothers masterpiece. Continue. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Please chime in whenever <laughs> whenever you want. Yeah, Burn After Reading, so funny. Really great. Oh, Brother Warth, they're also really good. Um, yeah, just great music. Uh, deserved its like reputation for it. Uh, this is all in one day, by the way, of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, Burn After Reading, then Pelican Brief. Uh, which I don't I, know why that made me just like that, like comedy. Oh, <laughs> um, and then I ended the day with Mank. Uh, and we talked about Mank, so won't get into that. Then the next morning at like 7 a.m., because my, my COVID sleep schedule was like go to bed at 7 p.m., wake up at 7 a.m. Um, I watched Lover's Rock which is the uh, second film in the small act series from Steve McQueen. And it's getting a lot of buzz as being like the best film of 2020 and 7 a.m. And with the volume down so you don't wake up uh, the roommates is not the vibe for this movie. I really need to rewatch it, uh, perhaps with some substances in me, uh, with the volume cranked. And because it is such a vibes film, not a 7 a.m. vibe like <laughs> film. I watched Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. Um, I had no clue what was going on in that whole movie, um, but the production design was fine. It's a new Netflix Christmas movie. Keegan-Michael Key and Forrest would occur. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I didn't like it, but, but uh, some people might. Uh, a Brighter Summer Day, the uh, Edward Yang film. Um, so long, so, 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 so long, but just break it out in chunks and you'll knock it out. It's a good one. <laughs> Uh, three Colors Red, so the third film in the Three Colors trilogy. All three of those are masterpieces. I highly recommend. 
um, a documentary um, or a concert film rather. Oh, Arjun, I'm sorry. Do you, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, bye. <laughs> um, okay, he, he said he said he had to bounce for our audio listeners. He had to, he chatted before he left. He, he, I've got to bounce, but all the movies I want to talk about are probably going to be on my top list. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I didn't, there's yeah, so many. You're so fun. I'm going to do uh, the same thing. Okay. I, movies so i'll balance you out <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you brooke um yeah lou and davis uh concert film so it's like a lot of country artists and folk artists come out and it's like they sing the music of and related to that time and oscar isaac comes out and sings and plays guitar and he's a talented musician um did you know oscar isaac was in a ska band I was watching the worms. I was watching that video just the other day. Oh my God. For for a while I was watching and I was like, which one is he? Cause he cannot be any of these. And then I realized <laughs> it was the basis. And he's like, maybe like 110 pounds soaking wet, wearing like a little, like a, I don't know, some kind of hat and like a little tank top. Oh my God. <laughs> it's it's a gym. Just look up pictures from that. Um, <laughs> The Artist, which we already talked about on a different episode. Uh, Red, White, and Blue, the third film in the Small Act series. Good. But it it, it had like the, the... There's like the whole mantra is that John Boyega plays a guy who's experiencing racism in his like part of South London uh, from cops. And he joins the... Even though he's like a PhD, he joins the police force to try and change it from the inside. And he learns the hard way that like oh one good cop can't change a system and i wish the balls the film had the balls to to put the period there but we get an ellipses instead and it's kind of like well i don't know cops maybe are good and uh mm -hmm. um, maybe that's just not for me uh possessor maybe another end of year 2020 for me alicia have you seen it you're not no your no but like okay. it's been it, i keep i just keep almost watching it yeah um, <laughs> and i've heard amazing things really good performance from uh what's his name uh christopher abbott um who is also great in black bear uh which i'll get to i watched i've I'm heard that him and olivia uh cook uh might be something something Oh, some Hollywood goss for us. Yeah, but um, I like that. I like that idea. Sorry to interrupt. You're fine. And Inter please interrupt me. I'm talking too much. Because <laughs> uh, we're only at December 11th right now. And oh, we still have 10 more days to go. Um, I've watched at least a movie every single day of December. Um, some multiple nights, maybe more. Brooke, uh, do you want to like leave and then come back in 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, like, there's only know. like... 15 more titles um i'm your woman <laughs> i'm your woman um which is a new movie on amazon prime that's getting a lot of buzz from some critics uh rachel brosnahan is the titular woman i suppose uh it's like a 70s crime drama um it's parts of it i thought i was loving it and then it hits the halfway point and i feel like it kind of peters out and doesn't know what to do with itself um but it's worth watching i think um, Bloody Nose, Empty Pockets might be on the end of the year 2020 list. That's a quasi documentary about like a bar in Las Vegas that's shutting down. And so all of its regulars come together for one final night together, except it's not that at all because it, the documentarians like went around to new, they were based in New Orleans and went around to New Orleans finding like the like kookiest and like strangest characters and bar flies there and then told them to pretend they were at a bar in Las Vegas that was shutting down. And so it's all of them being themselves, but it's, but not, and it's, it's, it's this, it's one of those like, is it documentary? Is it fiction? Ooh, let's find out. Um, but I, that's condescending because it's great. Uh, it's a really great watch, I think. And I highly recommend that. That will probably be on my top 2020. Alex Weedle, the fourth small axe film, probably the, my least favorite still good tenet i watched tenet um mm -hmm. good good movie <laughs> um i like it it's ridiculous it doesn't make sense um <laughs> but i had so much fun with it and uh and uh robert pattinson's great so uh and the soundtrack oh my god the soundtrack great um black bear 
we'll talk about it on the end of 2020 list. So I'll save my thoughts for there. Aubrey Plaza is phenomenal in it. Uh, Die Hard, already talked about. Let Them All Talk, new Steven Soderbergh film on HBO Max. Um, that'll probably be on my best of 2020 list. Maybe. Oh, really? Wow. I don't know. I need to, I need to figure it out, but I, I really loved it. Um, wow. It is, it is so, I, I loved, I'll say this. I'll let, I loved 80% of it and the ending I'm still churning and I don't know how to take it. Um, but most of it, it's just like amazing actresses, like bouncing off of each other on a gorgeous cruise ship. And uh, Steven Soderbergh, who, what he can do with like digital photography is just like far and away better than his contemporaries. Um, I highly recommend watching that one. Lucas Hedges is like the weak link of the film, in my opinion, which is not a bag on him, but rather a like praise for everyone else. He has a really great romance subplot that is just like, it, uh, it got my heart. Um, Bad Mom's Christmas we talked about. Education, the final small acts film, uh, worth watching because I have a lot of like educators in my family and my mom teaches at a title one school. And so like issues of like money and school schooling and like where that's going and racism in schools and like for all of that, um, it's worth watching. Uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which we might do next week. Uh, we can talk about it. Um, so I might hold my thoughts on it, but good. Uh, Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh, Talk my... about a, a bowl of hot, warm chicken noodle soup. Oh my God. Yes. yes. It's only my second Ghibli or Ghibli. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I so... said Ghibli for the longest time, but when you look at the kana, it's like Ghibli. So I think, that, <laughs> yeah. Mm, okay. Um, but I... I uh, yeah, I'm not well versed in them. I don't have like the intense attachment that a lot of people do. I've only seen Spirited Away and now this. Um, but Kiki's Delivery Service, you nailed it right on the head, Alicia. Bowl of hot soup uh, of a film. Uh, I love when movies like don't have stakes, really. Like she's just like a small business owner who's just going about her day. Um, and... I know, like the attention it gives to just her like shopping for groceries or like making pancakes makes my heart oh my god we could have an episode on that and like uh also I will say the dub I've actually never seen the sub for Kiki I've only seen the dub uh, well most of the movies like since I grew up with them I like the dub is like my version of them which I right. know a lot of a lot of people are kind of like high and mighty about like that but most Ghibli dubs are pretty good um, and I think the one with Kiki, with, with Kirsten Dunst as Kiki, is great. It's just like so, so, it's so cute. Um, would recommend if anybody's like between the sub and the dub anyway. <laughs> we, we ended up watching the dub because uh, one, of, one of my roommates I was watching with, she's really attached the same way to the, oh, to oh. the dub um, as a kid. So we watched the dub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like. I, I don't know. I guess I'm not the biggest like anime person. So subs V dubs is not like a, it doesn't really bother me. Um, I feel like typically like I'll watch a subtitled version, but um, it doesn't really matter to me as long as long as the English dub is like competent because there are some dubs that are just like awful. Um, but yeah, nah. um, yeah, definitely worth watching. Um, Muppets Christmas Care we talked about, My Night at Mods we talked about, and The King of Staten Island is the last one um, that I watched. Not going to make my end of the year list, um, but worth watching. Um, I think Pete Davidson struggles to carry a, a, the movie. I don't think he's really a leading man, even though he's playing himself for the most part. Um, he has some great scenes, others not so much. Uh, the supporting cast in that movie is great, though. Uh, Bill Burr has a role that's like just built for him, and his mustache is just incredible uh, in that movie. <laughs> Uh, Belle Pally, it was the real standout to me in King of Staten Island, and she should have had more screen time, especially because she, her, like, subplot is kind of the way that they wrap up the film, and it would have felt a lot more earned, especially for its, its runtime is two hours and 15 minutes. That's, like, it is a long movie, uh, yeah. and just give me more Belle Paul, uh, get, what is her name? Belle something. I forgot. Holy. It yeah. Holy. Yeah. yeah. I've seen, she's really good in Diary of a Teenage Girl. And then this movie, um, 
a royal night out that's just like really cute where she's playing princess margaret Hmm. um she's yeah she's just like oh my god she just has like this charisma that's so like cute and fun god I lo- and i love how that i liked king of staten island i thought pete was good in it but yeah, the supporting cast you're right is like amazing and mod apato is great and i love that it, like while it makes marissa tomei be like the mom again it lets her do it in a definitely more rewarding way um yeah agreed i forgot i didn't even mention marissa tomei that's uh that's how good the supporting cast is because she's also great mm-hmm. um i'm done i'm sorry um <laughs> that was too long and i know it i'll whiz i'll whiz through okay uh-huh. i'll try i rewatched thoroughbreds i love it so so much i watched the personal history of david copperfield um which i kind of did not want to watch because it really just didn't seem like my thing i think deb patel is awesome but i just I didn't really want to and but it was the only thing my family could agree on and then I found it so charming like the cast is unreal the cast is amazing the score is just like really delightful and it it's the first thing that's ever really made me want to watch Dick, uh, read Dickens like I would recommend it it's just a really delightful movie <laughs> Um, not like incredible or anything but like it is what it's supposed to be and it's just really nice to watch I finished We Are Who We Are the Luca Guadagnino HBO series that I've talked about like every time we've had this podcast Um, I'd been putting off finishing it because I love it so much Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to finish it but I mean the finale was perfect Um, I god I can't recommend it enough it's like one of my favorite series that I've ever seen and HBO Max is just cranking out the good shit like that plus i may destroy you it like top tier tv for me uh, i just got hbo max so i'm excited oh, I'll, oh I'll my god yes take advantage um okay she dies tomorrow sorry caleb i liked it um, <laughs> i was wondering I... <laughs> with arjun leaving i was like are we gonna we'll save our fight for the next <laughs> yeah it's episode. not gonna it's not gonna make my um end of the year list but i liked it I like the, I could talk like more about the con, like the themes and stuff and I appreciate what it does and I understand it. And like, um, I find it really interesting to talk and think about, but at the same time, I understand, I think Josh Larson had the take that like, he, he was like, I understand the feeling that it's trying to convey and like the themes, but I myself didn't feel the, the kind of panic and the misery and like, um, hopelessness that the characters were feeling that I was supposed to empathize with but um, yeah I also watched Personal Shopper which was cool um, Case Stew rocks uh, it was I'm not gonna I, I didn't expect it to be scary like I didn't really know <laughs> that there would be ghosts in it and it really freaked me out I was like in my basement on my own <laughs> um, but there were certain things about the spiritual elements that I think less would have been more in terms of making it um, emotionally uh, effective, which it, in, in some instances it does show that restraint and it pays off. In others, I think it doesn't. Um, but I mean, she's awesome. I and, love Personal Shopper. Yeah. Um, I just love that kind of movie. I don't know how yeah. to describe it, but like I was in the mood like, for that specific kind of movie. Like ghost stories i guess you didn't know it was a ghost story but like i want to put together a list of ghost stories that aren't spooky so much as sad yeah 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 yeah. that's i mean the past like 10 years that's definitely been its own genre hmm. um scandal in sorrento which is a 1955 movie starring sophia loren and vittoria de sica um who i didn't know like acted in a comedic way ever he's it's it's funny in a lot of ways it's like a very um like cute and amusing movie on the whole but I did fall asleep for like kind of the whole middle of it my parents really wanted to watch it um and it was just kind of that it was like cute and amusing but not um much more than that I talked about better watch out it's great and that same night I watched silent night silent night deadly night for the first time the 84 slasher um, basically about a guy who like has a terrible experience with Santa when he's a child that involves murder and attempted rape and he grows up and like 
to, like goes around killing people dressed as Santa. Oh, wow. I would actually kind of recommend if you're looking for like a ridiculous slasher, I would recommend. It is ridiculous and um and like not even the slasher scenes are my favorite. It's like mm-hmm. the not there's this one scene where he like starts working at a like a toy store and it shows him like having this brief relief from like his traumatic life and he seems to like start to become a regular person and he's like thriving at this toy store and it's just like him like putting things on shelves or like lifting a little girl up so she can reach something on the top shelf and then his boss being like this kid like this kid's going (laughs) um just like a mall santa walking by (laughs) you regret again (laughs) Yes. Um, yeah, so that's a light recommend. And then I told you I watched Stalag 17 uh, last night. And I think that's pretty much it. I've been wa- re-watching other random Christmas shit. Oh, and like two weeks ago, I finished The Queen's Gambit. And mm. yes, it's very, very good. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> All right. I'll take us home. Uh, I watched Brother Bear and the Hunger Games. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. I thought about <laughs> thought about rewatching uh, The Sound of Music. Uh, I thought about rewatching The Social Network, uh, and then I didn't. Uh, and then <laughs> other I go sometimes. Yeah, tell so- everybody I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. that was last night um as i like drew christmas trees uh with fancy gold markers to send to people um i i lead a very wholesome boring life (laughs) (laughs) but yeah that's about it i'm sure there are others but those are in my most recent memory and i'm very tired now so are we done? We're done. We're oh, done. wait, I also watched Fargo, the show. I forgot about that. Oh. I've been watching that. Good. I'm I'm like maybe two episodes away from the finale. Wanted to throw that in there. Now, now we're good. Now we're good. <laughs> now we're good. Oh, yeah. Caleb, your list wasn't that extensive. So Yeah, I did throw in the TV I was watching, too. I added another one on there. I was like, yeah. oh, is he okay? He's I- <laughs> I actually had the thought like recently like I mean I'm really getting burned out like I'm just not excited watching movies anymore because it's like I've just watched too many and then I, like as soon as I finished work today I was like well time to watch my night at mods like <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this weird whenever I come home sometimes I get into this weird mood where like I don't really want to watch movies I just want to like read or watch like old like low budget BBC miniseries adaptations of Jane Austen stuff. Mm. So I'm right now watching like one of the lower rated adaptations of Mansfield Park. <laughs> and it's really boring. I don't know why I'm watching it. But Maybe I you am. need something to like calm yourself down. From yeah. Days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, I'm also reading the. Stop! <laughs> fucking stop! I'm sick the, of this shit. The oral history of the making of Days and Confused. It's really great. There's some Ooh. great nuggets in there. The, okay, now I'm. I'll, I'll mute myself. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> Good night, Brock. Good night. <laughs>